let's get to work. Oh, hi! <laughs> Chiffon pulled the quick like, switch. What is it? The Hollywood switch? Oh, the, I, I, I don't know. Texas about switch. That's what it is. Oh, like Texas switch. That sounds hot. Welcome to Backstage Barry. Okay, we are here with the most amazing Anita Procedure here at the West Bank Cafe. We just saw her amazing performance of, your, your last performance, unfortunately, of adult performer uh, at the Lori Beachman downstairs. And I got to tell you, sweetheart, that show was killer. All kinds of emotions, comedy meat and potatoes. You're a theater gal and you're a gal after my heart. The first question I actually have for you is, who is your biggest influence? Because you have a very specific style and I wanna know who is your, like, when you were a child, who was like vocally your biggest influence? Um, it's, it's hard to say, cause I feel like it's really been a combination of a lot of different people. Um, I came to really love Bernadette Peters a lot. I really love the way that she, you know, sort of balances humor and sexiness and, uh, so she's sort of one of my one of my faves, but it's yeah. definitely a combination. And as I've gotten older, I've turned a lot more towards old Hollywood. So like Joan Crawford's one of my big faves right now. Yeah, but, you I know. can tell those bangs, girl. Uh, yes. So obviously, I'm a huge fan of the vintage. And the first thing I thought when you got up on stage was like, "Oh my God, people, her back is beautiful." Can you slit? Like, can you give us a little turn? We need to I see this back. It. We need to see this back. Can we see this back? Are you is it in the frame? Oh my God! Seriously, it's perfection. You could ice skate on that thing. It's like <laughs> baby got back. <laughs> a baby got back, literally and figuratively. Amen. I am so absolutely obsessed with you because of your honesty and your creativity. Thank you. And um, I, I, where else are you going to be doing this show? Are you going to be doing this elsewhere? Uh, well, we hope to do it in L.A., bring it back. We did, like, a preview of the show before we came here, which was sort of a stripped-down, um, smaller version of uh -huh. it. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to do the full shebang. And um, kind of, I want to jam-pack it more and sort of set some more things, because a lot of it is sort of flying by the seat of my, my pantyhose. Uh, which I can't believe, because yeah. it has cohesion. Thank you. It actually has pathos. I try to. And I love that. I think it's amazing. It's a weird thing, because it's basically, like, a life story show, so it's hard to sort of pinpoint the things that I think an audience will think is interesting. And it's a weird experience to, to pick those things, but I think it worked. You know, I think so we found a good balance. I find it so interesting because Shafan and I were talking about this uh, not too long ago, uh, that you are obviously a cabaret queen. That was a cabaret. I've seen many cabarets and I love my cabaret queens. Like, I'm sure you know, uh, suddenly Seymour, Cacophony love. Daniels, mm -hmm. Paige, Paige Turner, Turner, Jackie Cox, all oh, Jackie Cox they're mm -hmm. all like on my top list. Oh yeah. And you are now a part of that because... Thank you. you but this was like old school, I am in a East Village Cafe Cabaret. Amazing. And I loved it. Just your whole mood, your whole... What, what was your first cabaret that you ever saw? Oh, my first cabaret that I ever saw? That's hard to say. I mean, it's it's hard to know. I mean, or I've at seen least some... the one that, like, kind of stuck with you the most. The one that I would say was recent, it was Coco Peru. It was... Um, Genius. Because, yeah, because it was also her honesty and the way that, it, you know, my whole struggle, because as a drag queen, is people people have so many expectations for you. They expect exactly. that you're going to do A, B, C, and D. You know, they, they think you're going to shablam, you're going to death... They, they want death you to drop. do these certain things. So with Coco, the way that she just boldly came out and just did what she did, and one of the stories she told, too, was like, I always loved these female roles, and I wanted to sing these roles, and then she would just sing the song in her key and just... It was wonderful. It's you amazing. Know? And she was so proudly like herself and genuine and honest. And that I thought of her a lot in this process of putting this together. You don't know what it does for a queen like me who wants to aspire to do very similar kind of work. Mm -hmm. To hear that you live in L.A. Mm -hmm. This kind of work isn't as hard to grasp in New York City because mm -hmm. it's a theater city we, yeah. but for you to be able to be who you are and be a successful culpable queen in LA doing this it's uh, what is that like for you I mean that's gotta well, be a struggle yeah it's hard because there's not a lot of queens in LA that, that sing or even really do what I do and a lot of times people are and like not, and not sing like you sing well, thank you because that voice is it's pure it's genuine it's theater but but you, you got you have that balance of pop and theater and, Thank you. and the I try knowledge. To, to try to find that to find that balance, but it's hard. Um, 
but it's also nice because I'm more of a commodity there. Whereas here, there's more people that are doing sort of similar things to what I'm doing. So I found that I just had to sort of market myself really hard and find the the uh, the places where I fit. And I think I'm starting to do that after being there for now two and a half years. Yeah. I'm starting to kind of carve out my own niche. And I think Great. that's really what it is. I think when you don't fit in, you have to just kind of create your own shit. It's hard. Yeah. It really is. I'm very proud of you for doing it because Thank that's you. very difficult. I have I have quite a few friends in, in WeHo. And um, I... Uh, and when I did my research on you and checked you out before we came here, mm-hmm. I'm like, this girl is all kinds of vintagey, and and she is succeeding in LA, and that is a big deal for for like cabaret queens who 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 want to branch out into that area. Yeah, you know, it makes us feel there is a place for us. Um, somewhere a place for us. A somewhere a <laughs> place for us. I'm sorry, I can't. This one, I'm. I am so into you. Aww, you know, we should one kiss. Of, I know. Kiss. I, uh, 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 you know, one of the things that I love about you, though, is your 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 absolute brazen honesty, and um, because you are not afraid to tell people about your life story, and that's yeah. what these. Thi- that's what a cabaret really is. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you haven't shared with us that like we might want to know interesting little tidbits I mean I shared a lot in this show you're so pretty if you honest saw, if you saw the show I really really laid it out there was one story that I wanted to tell that I didn't sort of end up I didn't really feel like it exactly oh, fit give me an exclusive oh an exclusive this just in my coming out story so Ooh. the boyfriend who I, I talk um, extensively about a boyfriend in this show and my first sexual experience with him in which I sing Something's Got a Hold on Me by Etta James and uh, that sort of led me to my coming out because we used to fool around in different places and we used to fool around in his car a lot. And one time we pulled over in like broad daylight, such idiots, fooling around. And the police came <laughs> and <laughs> full on brought in reinforcements, like oh my God. sat us in the back of the car. And I was like 13, like crying. It was a disaster. But they called my mom and they brought her to come get me being a minor and that was her first you know understanding of me being a gay person and and the first the main thing she said to me was oh honey it's just so not romantic in a car well, and you then gave she me knew. no choice people yeah, I don't exactly. know what else so to that do. was sort of my coming out story it's I was outed <laughs> by the police <laughs> Whoops. Out, outed by the police. Yeah, I had a different Shamelessly. experience. My mother blew her nose in the sock of mine. I was like, I'm gay. No, you're not. Hey. Like, she picked it up off the floor. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so, I <laughs> know, <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Um, but, so, you are, like, I love that you are yourself. And that's a hard thing to accomplish on stage. What's hard with drag too, and I talk, talking, you know, I talked to a lot of people as I was making this, getting input from some friends, and I had friends that were were saying, a lot of drag queens they make these jokes and they talk about, oh, you know, street walking, or they make, you know, there's a lot of these sort of, uh, yeah, they're jokes, they're not real. But this, I mean, everything you I talked about in the show, experience. it's all, it's all true. Not and saying it's you all were a street walker because you weren't a street walker. No, but I mean, I. But I, you, you have an experience beyond. I think most people are us. used to, to to queens really putting on a a front, which I am in a lot of ways. I mean, I'm dressed up in in costume, but at the same time, like, the heart of it is very true. You know, I was, you know, that's something I wanted to say. I love, one of the number one reasons I love you all, right out, right out of the gate, is the uniqueness and the ability to share with us that people are multi-dimensional. Yes. It's not mm. just you too. It's your uh your the, your, your um accompanist. But by the way, let's give a shout out to them. Look. Jack Benny, my Jack my Benny. boys. So Jack Lipson and are Benny Lipson. Twin? twin brothers. Oh my god. They're Talk ter- about my they, dream fantasy. It's truly Lord, they, and are they're they, darling. Where are they? Are they they're like, around here somewhere. You could probably flag them down. But they're so great. They have a great story too cuz their mom is a great musical theater actress. Uh-huh. Val Perry, she's done Oh my. She oh, was wow. the first um yeah, she was the first um, Ava Perone in the LA Evita. Oh, that's a magnificent. So she's she's fantastic. So they grew up with that influence of theater. So they they are like theater babies, but they put their own twist on it. So we just get along so well, and I have so much fun working with them. Now, did they did, did they arrange your songs for you? We did a lot of these arrangements. We sort of did together. So I came to them, and like for so we do a summertime uh, mashup. That's summertime, the classic summertime, and then summertime sadness. And I was like, listen, I want to do this. I've wanted to do it forever. So they just sat there and just musically kind of created it. I mean, have you guys thought about and, 
cutting an album of this actual show. Yeah, well, we've thought about because recording some Because your arrangements of some of those songs, I've actually never heard. Yeah, like well, the, it's, and it's all them. They're, they're musical geniuses. Uh, I come to them with the ideas, yes. and then they make do all the legwork. But work. it's apparent that that trio, you know, is a very strong group. Yeah, and well, yeah. Those arrangements right. were amazing. I've never heard some of those songs like that, and it's quite... Oh, by the way, I'm saying this only because I see him right here. You made this boy cry. Yay. Right out here, and the, the t- I, I turned over here. It was Sorry. the last song, uh, sing a song. Yes. Um, which also touched my tenders because my mom and I were huge Muppets fans, huge uh, Karen Carpenter yeah. fans, mm-hmm. um, and, and it's hard for me personally not to like you know be emotional with that song. I love that stuff. So yeah. like and that was very much very very much intentional because we started with "Let Me Entertain You," which the idea of that was like in the show Gypsy. She starts by singing it as a little kid and then sings it later as an adult and then suddenly has this very sexual connotation. Yes. Uh, but so we like the idea of like revisiting, of going back to the to childhood and singing this song that a lot of people know from the Muppets that, you know, and, and just sort of tying it all together that. in a way. Uh, I love it. You know, one of the things that I say, I love that you actually titled this Adult Performer. Yeah. Because... Um, you, you, because of like what you said, you, you started with the "Let me entertain you." She starts as a child and stuff like that, but shows that like the movement. Yeah, I have. wanted to tell that story of how I've done all these different things and I've worn sort of all these different hats in my life, but at the same time, it was all kind of the same heart within within all of that, within all the things I've done with it. Was dressing up, doing church plays, doing porn, doing drag. You know, it's sort of there's the same heart in all of it, and and like you said, you know, people want to. Put you in different boxes, but I'm like, no, it's been me all along. People like, are it's multidimensional, been me. yeah. And we need more shows like this that describe the world that way, yeah. Um, and it's really easy for us. To, it's very palatable mm-hmm. when we have such a beautiful, talented queen. Thank you. And amazing musicians. They're great. And I mean, you just came all the way over here for us, and we are so ultra appreciative of it. Well, I'm so glad you guys came. We had such wonderful crowds both this nights. This so was grateful. probably one of my favorite shows I've ever seen. And, um, I mean, first off, mainly because you you sang one of my favorite songs ever, which I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil surprises for people yeah. because she's going to be doing this show or cutting an album or something. But something. you sang one of my favorite songs ever. which In a whole new way, I'm no sure. No one ever has done that song, period. And then you did it in a whole new way, which is just outrageous. I could, I was dying. Oh, thank you. But I actually, you almost killed me this evening. There was a joke about about bareback porn and I was not ready for it. And so the, the, I, and I chucked, oh, 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 yeah, 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 oh, um, you, you're a very experienced queen, but and you, you've probably done a lot of things that you love. Is there a number that you haven't actually? What is? Is there a dream number that you have yet to do that you would like to do? Ooh, I think there's a few. Uh, the the first song that I ever performed in drag was maybe this time from Cabaret, mm-hmm. and I sort of haven't exactly revisited it. So I would like to. Uh, revisit that in a new way in an exciting way and we thought about putting it in this show but it just felt a little too on the nose and just felt like it wasn't you know I'm sure you know people have saying maybe this time in a million cabarets so I was like well maybe shelf that for later but I think one of these days we'll come out with a really cool version you are so darling because you actually said well my friend I said I sang Castle on a Cloud and your accompanist was playing it a lot and then you don't worry I'm not going to sing it yeah and do you, did you hear the audience go Thank God. Like, they literally go, thank God. Well, I already sort of sang my my, my little kid song, which yeah. was, you know, I feel uh, in my own little corner and I feel pretty. So it sort of felt redundant. I thought about thought about singing it, but I was like, I don't think that people need to see a grown man sing Castle on a Cloud. I just don't think it's... <laughs> not at this time. It's not what we need. Um, you know, I love your photographs. I, I love the photographs that you had with your, uh, with your show. Um, mm. What was it like, really, for you coming out because there was like this quasi support from your family but then yeah. also they were very well, religious it seemed like so yeah so so I grew up in a very religious household um, my dad mostly very very conservative but then my mom when they sort of got a divorce my mom became a lot more um, freewheeling or whatever it were free spirited and so she's here tonight she's my biggest fan her and my sister are my biggest fans and my dad and my stepmom were also very supportive they sent me flowers here 
to the theater. Uh, it's just sort of not their... It's not their flavor. It's not their style. And they even said, if you want us to be there, we will be there. But I told them, you know, no, it was a little too... I felt like it was too raunchy Risky. for them. And they, they have seen me in drag. And my dad really has come a very long way. And he's very... And he loves he loves me. I always know? say that about my parents, too. Yeah. I, I, like, I, like I said, like you're up there on stage. There was so much you were talking about that yeah. I really deeply connected with. And mm. I was like, this bitch is amazing. I am mm. over you. I can't. Um, but, like... I agree. It, it, mm-hmm. it, like my parents didn't come out of the box the way that they are now. Yes. They're very supportive. You got you to teach their parents, and that's those moments that you know you become a teacher for your for your parents. You know, yeah. and it's just new to them, and you have to have that that grace and that patience. And it can be really hard when you're a little kid and you're so frustrated and you just want people to get it. Uh, and my mom didn't even get it at first, but now she she does. You know, but it's still but still every day she'll ask me questions and I'll explain things to her and I'll help her understand. And uh, you know, it's a two way street. So I love that your your general message, obviously, with this show is um, your family and friends, the people who really love you, mm-hmm. are the ones that matter. Yeah. And those are the ones that you should take on your journey with you. Yeah. Can you give any of, you know, young people out there, you know, give, give them some advice, especially... The deep cabaret queen, because I'm sorry, you're a deep cabaret queen. I go deep. You can, guys, she goes way deep, girls. You know, I'll tell you, you I, like, I don't know, you, you can do club acts, whatever, but at the end of the day, you're a deep cabaret queen. Give us some advice for those chitlins out there. What, um, what, do you, what can you tell them? Well, I will give you the piece of advice that uh, I wish that I was given, which is trust your instincts and trust what you know is right for you. Because there will be other people that want to influence what you do and tell you, oh, this is fierce, this isn't fierce. But you just have to find the place where you belong and just be the truest version of yourself and you'll eventually find it. Because I went through my whole life not feeling like I, I fit in and feeling weird. Uh, but eventually you just carve out your own your own niche and your own space and you go back to, to, to your authentic self. So just try to really listen to your heart and listen to yourself and try to tune out the people that don't matter. Now the friends and family, the people that do matter, listen to them, but yes. you know... Not the, uh, the others. So build yourself through your authenticity, people. Yes. That's basically what she's saying. She's you're all very eloquently. Your authenticity is the most important thing that you can deliver to us. All right. So, all right. Well, you know, I would love to talk to you for hours and hours and hours sure because I'm gushing because you're fantastic. But we have to sign off. So where can we find you? What, what, what do you have coming up next? And then where can we find you in the interwebs and everywhere else? Well, I'll be in New York uh, for a few more days. I'm doing um, Sunday night. My friends Jack Benny, they're doing a show of all their original music. And I'll be joining them. So I'll be special guesting Sunday night at the Triad. And then Monday at 730, we're doing a show at Club Coming. We're doing a queer cabaret. Jack Benny, myself. Jackie Cox is in that show oh God, and a Jackie, couple other a couple other friends of ours so you can catch us there then in LA uh, karaoke every Tuesday at Revolver and we'll be doing multiple queer cabarets at Tramp Stamp Grannies in Hollywood so those are throughout throughout Amazing. the month and you can follow me on Instagram at Anita Procedure Thank you, Anita. Thank you. So much. You were darling. Uh, like, for this, this was my cherry pop for you. And I am a fan for It was life. good for me. Was uh, it good but, for you? Oh, you have no idea, girl. Okay. I'm writing home about it. Fantastic. It was so good for me. And you have made a lifelong fan. Well, so thank, thank you, you so much. Kisses. Mwah. 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 And thank you, folks, for tuning Mwah. in to Backstage Barry. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't, if you like this video, which, I mean, how can you not? How can you not? Hit that little bell at the bottom. You'll be notified every time we have a uh, a, a new little, you know, zhuzhuzh for you, which is my slang for video. And, um, yeah, Let's we are cheers. signing up. Cheers. Liquor is the best. Ooh, liquor. I don't cheers even know her. Com. 